Has Twitter become the CNN of the masses? Well, it's a combination of Internet sources, clearly. I mean, Twitter stands out as one of the primary ways that people are getting the message from the street. Users can keep track of where the demos are and what's going on. President George W. Bush's deputy national security advisor, Mark Feifley. The real winners in this and, and the people that have gotten the message out, even though the U.S., with some exceptions, has been fairly quiet, has been the Twitter, uh, has, has been Facebook, Flickr, YouTube, all of those. If there's anybody that should possibly get a Nobel Peace Prize in the next time around, it should be the founders of Twitter who delayed their tuning up of their system in order for an amazing amount of tweets to be sent out over the last week or so. Twitter revolution, and it's now got the attention of the Pentagon. The U.S. military may not fully understand social networking, but they are using it to think very differently about the world. Twitter was so important, the U.S. State Department actually asked the website to put off scheduled computer maintenance. If you take into consideration that Twitter actually agreed to shut down its scheduled maintenance the other day because uh, the U.S. State Department requested that to happen because it's such a crucial tool. Using Twitter, YouTube, texting, cell phone videos, any social media they can to mobilize and tell the world what's happening in their country. It's a communications revolution with global implications for repressive governments trying to control the internet and social networking. Well, Ken, the FBI has raided an apartment in Queens, New York, belonging to a man named Elliot Madison. This after police arrested Madison here for using the social networking site Twitter to communicate police actions to protesters. Over the weekend, a planned upgrade to Twitter was even postponed in the interests of democracy for Iranians. Now, two of the activists are charged with using cell phones and the social networking website Twitter to help protesters avoid getting rounded up by police. This is about the giving their voices a chance to be heard. I order all those assembled to immediately disperse. When police confronted protesters in Lawrenceville on the first day of the G20, they had many non-lethal weapons at their disposal, including SWAT trucks and OC gas. But police say the protesters had aids of their own, text communications telling them where the police were and how to avoid them. They said it was coming from a man named Elliot Madison of Queens, New York. Without Facebook and Twitter and Flickr and these other websites, it seems to me the Iranian regime could could shut down all images of dissent from that country. Police say that Madison and his companion were monitoring police scanners from a room at this Kennedy Township motel and then using the social networking site Twitter to communicate that information to protesters. For this, they are charged with criminal use of police communications. It's really remarkable the way how the emerging media, the, the, the social networking, has taken over and has given a voice to a lot of people who've been silent. By monitoring those Twitter communications and developing other information, the police entered room 238 of the Carefree Inn on Kitslow Drive and arrested Madison and Michael Walshlager. Twitter uh, is a very important one, not only to the Iranian people, but now increasingly to people around the world, and most particularly young people. They had headphones on, microphones, and they were communicating with protesters. I wouldn't know a Twitter from a tweeter, but... Apparently it is very important. The revolution may not be televised, but it is being tweeted. Millions of young people in their 20s and 30s are communicating faster than the U.S. military can react. It is in many ways a conflict between the 21st century and the 12th century. 